Hello, my name is Troy Gray. I'm the director of Spindle Talk Lattice City Boomtown Museum in Beaumont, Texas. And today we are in the Gladys City Oil Manufacturing Company. Um, and we are uh, on our way around the museum uh, after this building has three buildings left, so three more weeks. But we're still going to keep going around because there's a lot of stuff to talk about. But in this building, you can see uh, paintings of George Washington Carroll, Patilla Higgins, and George Washington O'Brien, uh, the three uh, central um, people that started the company. And then over here is also a picture of Anthony Lucas, uh, who was the mining engineer that uh, was the one that was overseeing the gusher, uh, the drilling of the gusher when it came in. Uh, but today we are wanting to talk about John Allen Beach. And uh, we are going to read from uh, a book called The Giant Under the Hill. We sell this book. Uh, we're going to talk about that book in a minute. But um, I wanted to read a little bit about John Allen Beach um, because this is the uh, land of a beach that the um, gusher came in. So, very uh, quickly, just let me read a little bit about beach. One of the first of these to grace the Southeast Texas scene was transplanted Kentuckian John Allen Beach, a soldier of fortune, physician, teacher, and surveyor by profession, and a spare time botanist, mineralogist, and geologist, a man of restless inquisitiveness and a wide spectrum of abilities. He sought to turn everything he saw to good account including the distinctive geological features of East Texas. In 1833, Beach moved with his wife and two children to Mexican Texas, suddenly in Bevel, which is now uh, Jasper, what, where he surveyed for the Mexican government located at Nacogdoches and under the auspices of the local empresario Lorenzo de Zavala. The two land grants Beach uh, received as Mexican colonists were both issued in 1835. The first, situated in the prairie southeast of the ravine of Tevis, Tevis Bluff, the early Natchez River settlement that later became Beaumont, encompassed one of those geological anomalies that common to the region, a low, sharply rounded hill, 26 feet in the elevation about, and about a mile in diameter protruding prominently from the surrounding flatlands. The homesteaders had begun to call it Big Hill or Sour Spring Mound uh, because of the five mineral springs located on its southeastern flank. Natural gas bubbled up through the waters in the sulfurous rush and in many places seeped up through the earth itself. Skipping a paragraph, the spits <clears throat> the specific nature of the value of each saw in those seeps and mineral springs will probably always remain a mystery, but it is a matter of record that in conversations with his fellow soldiers during the Mexican War, he indicated that he deliberately chose the tracts of land that contained the mineral springs. So later he um, actually moved to California and then Oregon. Um, in Portland, he dies uh, in Oregon. But uh, kind of very interesting uh, person uh, to study um, why he chose those round, um, mounds and that. Uh, but this is actually the land where the first gusher came on. So kind of interesting guy who settled in uh, this area very early. But um, so we're also talking about our upcoming events. Uh, in September, or sorry, October. Today is October, so uh, we have uh, several events that you need to take a uh, take advantage of. October 9th, first of all, we have our intermediate bladesmith class. So if you have taken the basic bladesmith or blacksmith, you can um, come into the intermediate class. It's 175. It's a really great class. Uh, you continue with your uh, learning about blacksmith and, and making a different uh, knife. Uh, so please uh, come and call us for your spot today. Uh, it's uh, actually 175 sounds expensive, but it's one of the cheapest bladesmith classes around. Uh, also on that day is our Dow Chemical and Invista uh, Appreciation Day. 
we are so close of getting our gusher. Hopefully it um, will be done. Uh, we were hoping today, but um, because the rain is kind of delayed, but it will definitely be done by October 9th. And this uh, appreciation day is not just for Dow Chemical. We want everyone to come out to say thank you to Dow Chemical and Avisa. They did a really great job on fixing our gusher, and uh, I'm just thrilled about it. So please come out and enjoy. We're going to have our reenactors out here. We're going to have um, games and that out uh, but we really just need you uh, to help us to say thank you also um, October 10th is our next uh, uh, open mic night uh we'll have picnic uh tables out uh for you guys to bring out your dinner but we also want you to bring out your talent we would just love to use our stage uh for uh great talent that's around southeast texas so please come out for that and then the next one of that is october 24th but before that october 22nd 23rd and 24th in boma is going to be called museum madness because every museum is going to have activity sometime that weekend. Ours is going to be October 22nd, our annual uh, Spindle Top Spook Fest. We didn't do it last year, but we're going to do it this year. We're not going to have our games out. We're just going to have our uh, people hand out candy. Uh, we're kind of uh, afraid of the COVID uh, cases going high. So uh, we're going to hand out candy, but we're also going to have a movie uh, out here. So bring your blankets, bring your lawn chairs. We'll have some chairs out there, but we'll be outside. If it's raining, probably Probably we won't be able to show the movie but we're definitely will be showing a movie out there uh, right now we have a set uh, uh, to show night at the museum so that should be a lot of fun also um, we, uh, then of course October 24th like I said is the um, open mic night um, and then I forgot one which is October 14th and uh, we will have online, so you have to get online at six o'clock. It's going to be live, and uh, this is our first online coffee and spindle top series. And uh, we have two of the three authors of Giant Under the Hill, hence why I read from that book, but also had really great information about John Allen Beach. But uh, Ellen Rinstra and Judy Lindsley are sisters. Uh, their friend also helped them, uh, Joanne Stiles, to help them write this book. You can ask them anything. It's a Q and A, it'll be live. Uh, type in your questions. We would love to have you. We'll have more of that information on our social media, but uh, be prepared for a really interesting uh, topic about uh, spindle top history and that this uh, we're hoping uh, this series we're hoping to get different people from a United uh, around the United States to talk about some aspect that's related to the city or I know the next one will be the national uh, the curator for the National Museum of uh, National Barber Museum so uh, that will be a lot of fun so please join us for that that's um, October 14th at um, 6 o'clock online live Q&A. So anyway, thank you for joining me a little longer today, but there's a lot of information uh, about uh, everything that's going on. We are trying to uh, move on this museum and getting uh, this a very active museum. We really just want this to be a place where the community come out and enjoy themselves. So uh, see you next week and um, we'll go to the Nelson and White building.